Hi and welcome to another YouTube video. In today's video I want to show you these two very different looking, uh, very different from each other looking townhouses that I've built and these two are for two very opposite neighbors and so I'm also going to tell you their story a little bit which was a bunch of fun to think of and stuff and so yeah I was very inspired to build townhouses. I have built a couple of townhouses in like my time playing The Sims but I don't actually know if I ever made a video building a townhouse because I like started my YouTube channel after Discover University came out and Brightchester is just simply the world's made for townhouses uh, kind of so yeah I don't really know if I did it here before but yeah so we don't really have a lot that is perfect for townhouses. We just have like these lots in Brightchester th that have like actual townhouses next to each other like in the environment but the actual lots themselves do kind of stand on their own and I think that's pretty sad because it would be so cool to have actual townhouse lots where we have like set dressing houses next to the houses that we build and we actually have like actual townhouses that are side to side next to each other and that is kind of the reason why I decided to build this like to build two houses at once and build them next to each other so that they have more of that townhouse feel and I feel like I succeeded in that of course you can judge that as well and let me know in the comments but I like the way that they look next to each other and I think this way it looks just less out of place being a townhouse. So I started building up the shape of them and both of them were very much inspired by pictures that I saw of townhouses that were built around the Victorian area. So it's kind of a mixture between a townhouse build and a Victorian build because I love both of those styles and I have been wanting to do a build in those styles for a while now. So yeah, I was just enjoying this one and enjoying playing with the shapes. That, that was a bunch of fun. And when I was building up the shape, I took some inspiration from townhouses from the Victorian period uh, or that were built around the Victorian uh, period and are now modernized and that was a bunch of fun because I was kind of feeling both so I was debating at the start if I wanted to build a Victorian house or if I wanted to build a townhouse um, but then I thought to myself why decide I can just do both and so I decided to do both and do some Victorian townhouses and I think they turned out really cute I like the shape of both of them. They are very very different already in shape but they are going to be way more different because of when I was building them I kind of wanted something more. I wanted just not like not just visual uh, representations and inspiration pictures. I wanted actual inspiration. I wanted characters that live here. I wanted these houses to have character themselves. And that is when the Sims team actually did me a huge favor. Of course they did, didn't do it just for me, but they released the teasers about their roadmap. So what is to come in the next few months? And they released that exactly when I wanted a story. And so in one of the uh, later teasers, they had a Sim, that Sim was switching through the TV. And then the first channel the Sim switched to uh, showed a family uh, in a backyard just doing stuff. The second one was kind of like a celebrity looking person who was blowing a kiss towards the camera and then the third one was very interesting because the third one showed some sort of rocky islands with a full moon and you could hear howling in the background. Then they also went onto their web page and they showed that there are going to be three new packs or kits that are going to be released. So two kits probably first and and then a game pack and the name of the game pack was Go Wild and together with the full moon and the howling the Sims community at this point pretty much takes it for granted um, that this is going to be a werewolf pack and that was exactly the inspiration that I needed because this way I now had that image in my head of these two very opposite neighbors who live next to each other in these two townhouses which is why one of them is decorated kind of like spookily and the other one is like very very pretty and pink um, and very cutesy and so in The Sims 3 we did not only have werewolves we also had fairies. Uh, we of course had a lot more like vampires and witches too but um, these two are the ones that we are still missing in The Sims 4 
vampires and fairies. And so I thought, how funny would it be if like a werewolf and a fairy would be neighbors? and uh, like have their opposite style kind of clash and at first I thought because these two neighbors are so different from each other they probably would not have the best relationship they probably would into get, get into some neighborly fights and stuff but but then when I was working on the topmost floor I realized that their two attics are connected through the roofs and at that point in my mind these stories started forming of these two supernatural being kind of having a forbidden love because because they are from two supernatural species who I don't know how well they get along normally um, but that these two are just like two lovable goofballs who have that in common that they are like kind of like outgoing and, and, and just fun personalities and so they kind of develop that forbidden love and meet over their attics and spend time with each other and that maybe the fairy kind of like tries to contain the werewolf when, um, when it's full moon and kind of like has the werewolf kind of contain that and then halfway through the building process like at first I just had some random sims living in here but then I actually went into the sims and now you can see uh, that there are two very distinctive uh, sims living in here these are the two that kind of have they are neighborly uh, love story, which is super, super cute. And at first when I was creating these two, I thought it would be super cool to subvert some expectations and to have a male fairy and a female werewolf. But then I found in Creatism this beautiful fairy dress that also had wings, which was exactly what I needed for my plans. But that one only really looked good at female framed sims. And that was a little bit of a bummer. So I went with a female fairy and uh, male werewolf. I guess I could have also done female fairy female werewolf but at the time that was just what came out and I love these sims regardless even though they do fit some stereotypes of like your supernatural couple but I don't know sometimes fitting into stereotypes is okay too. I guess. So yeah, you can not only find this house on the gallery, by the way, you can also find the two sims that I made on the gallery. And I don't usually put sims on my gallery, but these two I really loved. I really loved their story and I think it went so well with the house. So if you, if this kind of inspires you for a story, they don't have to be a love story. They were in my headcanon, but you could also make them mortal enemies because of their differences and stuff. So yeah, if you want to play with these two townhouses and the sims that live in there. You can also download those sims. They are tagged as having CC because I put some face overlay on them but the clothes they wear and the hairs that they have on are all uh, without CC so you can download them and they won't have any missing outfits and stuff as long as you have the packs that I used. I don't really remember which packs I used because I didn't pay attention but I, I, I hope you, you get what I'm trying to get at. And yeah so currently you see me decorating the interior house for the werewolf sim and I wanted this to be very dark and kind of broken down and I used the tool mod on the interior a lot to kind of shift and uh, turn around some items so that the interior of this build shows signs of previous um, transformations during during full moon nights. I thought that would be so cool to have like lots of scratches on the wall and stuff being thrown over and just laying there on the, on the ground. So I did that uh, downstairs uh, where I had this flower pot that I kind of turned over and then I put the pile of dirt next to the bucket and then let some uh, plants grow out of there because I thought that show showed some nice signs of destruction. And so the interior of this kind of became a little bit dark and scary. But the sim that I imagined living here, the uh, werewolf sim, I didn't actually imagine as such a scary person, at least when he's not transformed into a werewolf so I tried to make sure to have like some nice gimmicks that show that he's actually like kind of like a softy or a goofball and so I put a basketball into the kitchen you're going to see that maybe later in the tour so in some of the kitchen cabinets there's just like some random items like uh, like a basketball and just have some like play stuff just lying around there just to to make it show through that I gave him I think I gave him like the active and outgoing and the goofball traits so that's kind of like how I imagined him his personality but it's just that when he transforms and it's 
in his own house the house just i don't know he just leaves his mark on the house and yeah actually currently i'm building the bedroom and this was my favorite room in the entire house because in this room i really went wild um <laughs> with like turning stuff around having stuff all over the place have cracks all over the walls because i imagined that because the transformation happens at night it most probably happens in his bedroom most of all but if there are nights when he thinks about that the full moon is going to be or they are kind of important or he is like scared that he's maybe going to do something bad to his neighbor which he has a crush on um he also has this area over in his attic where he basically has a little prison cell that he can like uh, lock himself into maybe he asks her for help to guarded or something sometimes even though no if he would be concerned for her safety he probably wouldn't ask her to guard it but yeah that is the werewolf interior all complete now we get to the fairy interior and this one was a lot easier it went a lot faster because this was a cutter scheme first of all that i was very excited for uh because i don't really build with pinks a lot but i love to build with bright colors and so i did a lot of that here and mixed a little bit of pink within just because it was fitting for the character that lives here um and so yeah it was a bit of fun uh, to decorate and it went a lot easier and smoother than the first one because i didn't have to turn around all the items because the fairy doesn't transform the fairy is just a fairy i actually don't know if uh like if they actually were to release this game pack and it wouldn't only come with werewolves but also with fairies which i'm not expecting by the way usually they only had like one occult kind of game packs like they did with magicians and with vampires as well um so it don't really expect them to come out with two occults but if they did i don't actually know what i would want to see in fairies like what kind of abilities and what kind of skill tree um but i really do hope that when the werewolves come which i just now take for granted too like it has not been confirmed it's just that everyone in the sim community is speaking like it was confirmed because it was basically confirmed but not not officially um but uh, yeah i really hope that they do take a lot of time with the skill trees and make uh, werewolves a very very cool kind of a cold kind of like like the vampires were and please not like the mermaids were because the mermaids are still the worst occult in the sense for in my opinion but yeah currently you see me decorating the living room of the fairy and this was such an interesting room because in the other house i put the living room downstairs and the kitchen upstairs which i didn't really want to do because the dining room was downstairs and i guess it's kind of impractical that if you actually want to dine in the dining room and actually use it i guess most people just would eat in the kitchen anyways but um yeah if you want to have like a larger meal and you want to eat in the dining room you would have to carry everything downstairs like all of the food that you worked hard on for hours and as someone one who is kind of a com clumsy person and has fell down the stairs multiple times myself the thought of like carrying food down and up the stairs um it just seems very frightening to me and like a recipe for disaster so i would be kind of hesitant with that but in this fairy house i kind of switched it so we have the dining room office and kitchen spaces downstairs and then the living room moved upstairs but that meant that the living room was in a very close like tiny enclosed space it's kind of the smallest house room in the house i think um and so first i was worried but i need to build living rooms in smaller rooms more often because this i think is one of my favorite living rooms that i ever created because it's so cute and cozy just because it's in, a, in such a small space and then yeah the fairy actually had a lot more attic space than the werewolf did so she actually actually used that as kind of like a guest bedroom where she also has a lot of her Stuff that she uses for painting and her self-expression and then there are also lots of lots of storage space where you just have miscellaneous and decoration items that you just need to store away in the attic i think that was a nice little touch of realism i also really like the floor plan in both of these houses and how they are kind of mirrored but then there are still some differences um and yeah, I think that was also kind of a realistic touch for townhouses to be that are next to each other to have very similar.
similar sort of floor plans, so I did that. And I really like it. I didn't show you any of the bathrooms yet. I had to cut them out because I furnished two houses at the same time and that led to a lot of footage to go through. And I didn't want to bore you with it, so I cut out the bathrooms. Um, but they actually turn out to be very nice bathrooms. So if you download this house, my gallery ID is Sunny Creations, and then you can also look at the bathrooms and even play with these sims if you tag CC on, as I already said, don't don't worry about the CC, that's just some face of all eyes. And so yeah, I really hope that you liked and enjoyed this video and that you like this build as well. If you would consider subscribing, you would make me super duper happy and I hope we'll see each other again.